Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. So today I wanted to talk through a couple of things related to force feedback within iRacing and also how to set up wheel controls in the sim. Now recently iRacing made a couple of changes to the force feedback user interface. So we'll chat through those and we'll talk through kind of the setup from end to end. Now in this video, I'll be demonstrating the setup using a Fanatec wheelbase, but just know in general, what I talked through can be applied to any wheelbase at any force feedback level that you're running. Most modern wheelbases now come with software that'll allow you to finely tune the force feedback for the particular sim that you're running and potentially even the particular car that you're running inside a particular sim. Now, it's possible to sink hours into the profiles to try to dial in a specific feel for each car. And if you have the time and some experience with what the car should feel like in the sim, fantastic. You can get it tuned exactly to your liking. However, if you're like me and you prefer to start with something and work from there, my recommendation is to hit the support forums for your wheelbase and see what pre-developed profiles exist and try a couple of them out. If you land on a set that suits you, fantastic. Get them saved somewhere and then that can form the baseline for the force feedback that you're going to work with within iRacing. If you don't have a Fanatec direct drive wheelbase, feel free to skip over this section. What I'm going to talk through is how I find, install and then configure the custom force feedback profiles that I currently use. Over the years, I've tried different profiles. Some I've built myself, some I've taken directly from Fanatec. My current solution uh, is to use a set of profiles by a guy called Maurice, who is active on the Fanatec forums. Now, Maurice actually builds per car profiles for all cars in iRacing and a bunch of the other sims, which is awesome. I prefer a slightly simpler approach where I have a single force feedback profile per car type. So I have one for GT3s, one for prototypes, etc. So let me just show you from a Fanatec perspective where you can find those profiles. So I'm just here in the Fanatec forum. Um, now, if I scroll right to the bottom, you can see that Fanatec um, actually share their own profiles for the different racing games, which is great. iRacing is right here. It's a pretty good starting point if you have nothing else. But if you want to find the ones that Maurice puts together, you're going to want to head to Fanalab, as that is the software that they're compatible with. And then if you head into share your favorite profiles, or indeed this top one, the current beta, uh, you might have to search a little bit to find the most recent settings from Maurice. Uh, but he posts updated profiles in either of these two forum conversations, probably on a monthly basis or around the releases of an updated version of Fanalab. So once you've selected the force feedback profile you want, head over to FanLab, head over to Game Profile, import it so then it appears in this list. I'm not going to show you how to do that. There's tons of great instructions online. There's lots of good support in the Fanatec forums, so I'll leave that with you. But once you do have the profile imported, you should see it in this list. We will look at my GT3 profile as an example. So I'll select it here. I'll then click load to make sure it's loaded into FanLab. I'll then head over to the tuning menu. And in here, this is where you can make those fine force feedback adjustments if you want to. I'm very happy with how this profile feels right off the bat, so I didn't make any adjustments other than to this one slider here, the force feedback strength. It was set between 60 and 70% uh, when I imported the profile for the first time, but I pushed this all the way up to 100%, and I would recommend doing this for any wheelbase that you might be using. Now the reason is not to make the wheelbase incredibly hard to turn, but it's just to simplify where you're going to set the strength for the force feedback within your setup. For me, I prefer doing all of that within iRacing and within the sim itself. You don't have to, you could absolutely set force feedback strength here and or in iRacing, but I just think it's a much simpler solution if you have the wheelbase set to 100% and then you do all of the strength configuration within the sim itself. So once you're happy with the baseline feel of the force feedback and you've selected a profile and loaded it into your wheelbase software, the next step is to jump into the sim and that's where we're going to make some final adjustments. 
Before you do that, one recommendation I have is for you to set your force feedback strength to 100% in the wheelbase software. For me, it just makes it super simple and means that all of the strength adjustments around the force feedback I'm going to do in iRacing and I don't need to worry about the strength setting within the wheelbase software itself. You don't have to do it that way. For me, I find it simpler uh, and then it allows me to do the final customization purely within the sim. So we're at Sebring here in a test session. I'm going to jump into options. First thing to note is I would tick the use custom controls for this car if it is not already ticked. This just means that the force feedback settings will be saved per car. If you don't tick this, it'll be your default force feedback settings, which also can be useful. We just make sure you know that's what it will do if you do not tick this use custom controls. We're going to talk through this force feedback section. We'll go top to bottom. Obviously, enable force feedback will need to be ticked. Should be by default. Use linear mode. You want this ticked if you're using a direct drive wheel. The only times you would have this unticked would be if you're using a belt or a gear driven wheel and the help box at the bottom can talk you through that. Reduce force when parked. I like to have this ticked. It just makes the wheel easier to turn either at slow speeds or whilst you're in the pit lane, which can be handy. And then these next three sliders are kind of the key ones when it comes to the force feedback settings within iRacing. The first one here, max force, uh, yours might say strength. And if you left click on it, you can toggle between the two. Uh, I like to leave mine on max force. This is the primary strength slider. So the more you move the slider to the right, the heavier the wheel is going to feel. Uh, and the more you move the wheel to the, sorry, the slider to the left, the lighter the wheel will feel. Um, for the first run as you're setting it up, I recommend just kind of moving it right out to the left so you're not going to do a test with a super heavy wheel the first time you go out. Um, so I've just moved mine back a little bit here. Now wheel force, another important one. The ticked option for auto may well be select for you if you've not set this up before. This, if it's ticked, will mean iRacing tries to figure out or guess what the maximum strength of your wheel is. Um, I much prefer to tell iRacing exactly what my wheel strength is in newton meters. All modern wheelbases will have this clearly written down in the instructions or on the box. So my recommendation is untick from auto, set the slider to the appropriate wheel force for your wheelbase. For me, this is 20 newton meters, uh, and then you are good to go. Now this intensity slider, the default value is 50%. My recommendation is to just leave it at that value. Uh, it does what you would expect it to do if you pull uh, down to the left and you put it at a uh, lower value. So maybe 20%, you're just gonna get a weaker feel uh, in the wheel. Uh, and if you move it beyond 50%, it'll be stronger. But 50% should work in most cases. And the only reason I would adjust that up is if you're really struggling to get the heaviness feel from the wheel that you're looking for. For the smoothing, damping and min force sliders, if you're using a direct drive wheel, my recommendation is keep these to 0%. If you're using a belt driven or a gear driven wheel, then hover over each one of the values, take a look at the help menu text that pops up and get a feel for whether you think this is a setting that would work for you. And if you're not sure, adjust the slider, go for a few laps, come back in, pull the slider back, go for a few laps, and it's really personal taste. But if you've got a direct drive wheel, keep these to 0% and you'll be good to go. The final step in the process is to set the force feedback strength for this particular car. And there's a couple of ways we can do that. Um, again, we're in options here. And if you see this max force, and if you left click that, it'll say strength. Uh, it could be on either of those, depending on what your default is. I like to keep mine on max force. You can manually adjust this slider. To the left will be weaker, to the right will be stronger. And then you can go run a couple of laps and just get a feel for the strength and you can come back here and you can make adjustments left and right until you're happy. Now that's fine, that's a good way to do it. My preferred option is to let iRacing set the force feedback strength automatically and it will do that based on a combination of the car I'm driving and the track I'm driving and how bumpy that particular track is. So if you want to do it that way, you know, my recommendation is pull the slider down somewhere towards the left so you know the force feedback isn't going to be too strong when you jump straight into the car. Run two or three laps 
um, make sure you have your black box open and then just pull over to the side of the track but don't exit the sim and I'm going to take you through how you can make those adjustments so that iRacing is setting the force feedback automatically whilst you're in the car. Okay, so I've just run a couple of laps and now you can see in the graphics adjustment black box right at the bottom here, you can see FFB max force. Uh, it's currently set at 63.6, but there is now an auto button that is available to press. Uh, so just make sure that you've got, you can navigate around your black box and you can select OK and adjust the values. But um, if I go to the bottom here and then I just press OK, that's now adjusting the force feedback to whatever iRacing thinks it should be for this car and track combo based on the experience of me driving a couple of laps. Now, typically I find iRacing can take maybe four to five laps to get a good feel. It often offers up an initial force feedback. And then if you drive another two or three laps, it may alternate a little bit. So it is a bit of a learning process. So I would give it a good four or five laps. And then ultimately, if you're unhappy with the strength of that force feedback, either within here or within the options, you can make adjustments. So let's say this 58.1, I wasn't all that happy with it. Maybe I felt that was a a little bit too strong you know i can hit the minus button on my steering wheel and i can take it back to the 63.6 .6 that it was set at before maybe that just works better for me so ultimately force feedback strength is purely an individual choice but i do think i racing can get most of the way there by following this auto configuration within the sim itself and certainly for me it's reduced the amount of time i waste just faffing around with force feedback i feel i racing does a pretty good job across different cars different tracks to get the feel that i'm looking for a couple of points before we close out the video the first one is on the auto adjustment for the force feedback strength that i racing provides just know that every time you get into the car and you go for a drive, iRacing is taking a look at the force feedback strength and might recommend different values. If you've run the Auto FFB and you're running the same car at the same track, then the reality is it's unlikely to make big swings of adjustments, if anything, just one click up or down in terms of the force feedback. However, if you take the same car and you run it at a different track, iRacing might recommend a force feedback value that is a little bit different to what it was before. Of course, you're under no obligation to make a change. If you find a force feedback strength for a particular car that you love, then you never need to adjust it again, regardless of what track you're running at. However, if you do want to get a feel for what iRacing is suggesting, just head over to the graphics adjustments black box whilst you're driving and just see if the auto button is flashing up. And if it is, you can hit OK and you can get a feel for what the adjustment is. I generally find the change in force feedback strength doesn't vary from track to track too much but I do click on the auto button just to get a feel for whether I prefer what iRacing is suggesting or whether I go back to my default value. Now the second thing to be aware of is any firmware updates to your wheelbase could have an impact on the overall force feedback strength that you're getting through the wheel. So unfortunately, it is always worth a quick double check if you've had a wheelbase firmware update jump back into the sim, maybe jump into a familiar car at a familiar track, go for a drive, and then just see how the force feedback strength feels. Make sure it's not overly different. Maybe rerun the iRacing Auto FFB just to make sure you kind of get that consistent feel from one firmware over to the next. Okay, that's all we got for you on this one. I find force feedback to be a very individual part of sim racing. I don't think there's any single process for getting the right strength and feel for your setup. So let me know in the comments if you do it differently and how that process works for you. Thanks for tuning in and catch you in the next one.